Hello, and welcome back to our video series on pharmacology. In this video, we'll discuss chapter number 20, analgesic drugs. Learning objectives for this chapter, name several analgesic drug categories, describe the four therapeutic effects of aspirin, compare and contrast the site of action and the therapeutic effect of various analgesic drug categories, explain what types of analgesic drugs are controlled substances and scheduled drugs, Explain why some narcotic drugs are more addicting than others. Compare and contrast the therapeutic effect of various drugs used to treat migraine headaches. When given the name of a well-known analgesic generic drug, identify its trade name. When given the generic and trade names of an analgesic drug, identify what drug category it belongs to, what disease it's used to treat. When given an analgesic drug category, name several generic and trade name drugs in that category. And lastly, when given an ending common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. I'll start off with a quick introduction. Of course, when we're talking about analgesic drugs, we're talking about drugs that will treat pain. And pain is a common component of most disease processes. This can be mild or severe or chronic or acute. Now, the ideal analgesic drug would provide maximum pain relief, will produce no side effects, and will cause no dependence or addiction. But unfortunately, there's no such drug that exists like this. All right, the first type of analgesic drug we'll talk about are non-narcotic analgesic drugs. And these are only effective for mild to moderate pain. This is the very first step in pain control. And there are some advantages for this uh, category of drug. These are non-addicting, these are inexpensive, and many are over-the-counter, so they can be purchased without a prescription. Now, analgesic drugs that effectively relieve severe pain are usually addictive, as they're usually narcotics. And these are used to relieve or control severe pain that can't be treated by other types of analgesic drugs. I think there are various types of drugs that are used to treat pain, non-narcotics and uh, narcotic analgesics. When it comes to the non-narcotic drugs, there are three main categories we'll talk about. Salicylate analgesic drugs, non-salicylate analgesic drugs, and the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Right, we'll start off with the salicylate analgesic drugs. This is a very general category that includes aspirin and other chemically related drugs. So some common trade names you'll see uh, aspirin sold under are Bayer aspirin, uh, Ecotrin, and Emperin. Some other drugs that fit here, Diflunosol, which is sold under the name uh, Dolobid, Magnesium salicylate, also known as Dones, Salsalate, which is sold under the trade name Salsatab. Now the salicylate analgesic drugs have three distinct therapeutic actions. They act as an analgesic because they provide relief from mild to moderate pain by inhibiting the release of prostaglandins from damaged tissues. Another therapeutic action, they are an anti-inflammatory. This is because they decrease inflammation, also because they inhibit the release of prostaglandins from the damaged tissue. And the third th uh, therapeutic effect of this category of drugs is they are antipyretics, which means they reduce fever. And they reduce fever by acting on the hypothalamus of the brain to cause vasodilation and sweating. So this will increase the heat loss from the skin and will lower an elevated body temperature. Now when it comes to aspirin specifically, this is a salicylate drug, but this has a fourth therapeutic action that is unique to aspirin only and is not shared by any of the other salicylate drugs. And it is an anticoagulant. This will prolong the clotting time of the blood by inhibiting uh, thromboxane, which is a substance in the blood that normally causes platelets to aggregate and form a clot. All right, a quick focus on healthcare. One low dose tablet of aspirin, which is 81 milligrams, at a cost of only pennies per day, has been found to decrease the risk of heart attack or stroke in patients with coronary artery disease or those who have had bypass surgery or angioplasty. Now, WebMD recommends that if you think you're having a heart attack, you should call 911 first and then take a full strength dose of aspirin which is 325 milligrams, while you wait for the ambulance to arrive. But the regular use of aspirin, however, does have a downside. Because aspirin is an acid, it is irritating to the stomach, and long-term use of this may cause stomach ulcers. So to reduce stomach irritation, aspirin is available as an enteric-coated tablet, which is sold under the trade name Ecotrin, that dissolves only in the higher pH environment of the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. It is able to make it to the stomach and not be uh, broken down by stomach acids. Now, aspirin is also combined with antacid drugs like aluminum or calcium or magnesium to help protect the stomach. And this type of combination is known as a buffered aspirin. 
The aspirin used regularly for longer than 10 years has been linked to the development of cataracts in the eyes. Also, the use of aspirin to treat aches and pains of viral illness has been linked to the occurrence of Ray's syndrome. Now, Ray's syndrome causes liver damage and increased serum levels of ammonia and also encephalitis. So therefore, treating the symptoms of a viral illness like the cold or the flu or chickenpox, for example, with aspirin is no longer recommended. So instead, you should be taking acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. All right, now we'll talk about the non-salicylate analgesic drugs. And these include acetaminophen, for example, and other drugs that have a different therapeutic effect from that of acetaminophen. Now, acetaminophen is not related to aspirin or any other of the previously described salicylate drugs we've already talked about. Now, acetaminophen has two distinct therapeutic actions. It is an analgesic, so it will relieve pain, but the mechanism of how it does so is unclear. And it's also a antipyretic, so it reduces fever. And does so by acting on the hypothalamus uh, to cause vasodilation and sweating. And it increases the heat loss from the skin and lowers an elevated body temperature. So it's the same action as that of aspirin. But acetaminophen does not have any anti-inflammatory properties like aspirin does. So it can't be used to treat inflammation. And does not have the anticoagulant effect that aspirin has. So it can't be used to prevent a heart attack or a stroke. Now acetaminophen... Uh, does not cause the stomach irritation that aspirin does. So patients who cannot take aspirin because it may upset their stomach can take acetaminophen. Now I'll mention a uh, historical note. Acetaminophen is sometimes referred to as APAP, which is an abbreviation for its chemical name, acetylparaminophenol. Now tragically, uh, just within a few days of each other in 1982, seven people in the Chicago area died after having taken extra strength Tylenol capsules because they were laced with cyanide. The first death was that of a 12-year-old girl who had taken the drug uh, to treat a cold symptom. And several other deaths were in a single family who shared the same contaminated bottle of these Tylenol capsules. And each capsule contained 10,000 times the amount of cyanide needed to kill a person. The Chicago police would drive through neighborhoods with uh, loudspeakers warning them about the, uh, the dangers of the drug. And television news would broadcast warnings for consumers to not take Tylenol. So the manufacturer of Tylenol, Johnson & Johnson, immediately removed 31 million bottles of Tylenol capsule from various store shelves and offered to replace the already purchased Tylenol capsules with Tylenol tablets. So in response to this tragedy, the FDA set a deadline for all drug manufacturers to convert to tamper-resistant packaging. And the legacy of these Tylenol murders is still with us today in the form of these tamper-resistant packaging. And unfortunately, no one has ever been charged with these Tylenol murders. All right, some other examples of non-solicilate analgesic drugs. And these are used to treat uh, moderate to severe pain. Clonidine, which is sold under the trade name Duraclon. And also Zaconotide, which is sold under the trade name Prealt. And this is used to treat chronic pain. Now the drug Clonidine, also known as uh, Duraclon, blocks pain receptors in the spinal cord and prevents pain signals from reaching the brain. See, it blocks alpha receptors in the brain. also works by decreasing the release of norepinephrine, which allows the blood vessels to dilate and lower blood pressure. However, clonidine is best known as the antihypertensive drug that is used to treat high blood pressure. That drug is catapress. All right, now we'll talk about a, another category of, of analgesic drugs, uh, the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And these have an analgesic effect because they inhibit the production of prostaglandin. And these have less of a tendency than salicylate drugs to cause stomach irritation in ulcers. Now these are structurally similar enough to aspirin that patients who are allergic to aspirin should not take NSAIDs because their body will still see them as, as being so similar to aspirin that it will induce a reaction. And the NSAIDs are used to treat mild to moderate pain and inflammation. Now some conditions that the NSAIDs will be taken for, uh, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, bursitis, tendonitis, gout, migraine headaches, and dysmenorrhea. Here's some examples of some NSAIDs, celecoxib, which is sold under the trade name Celebrex, Diclofenac, which is sold under the names Flector or Voltaren or Cataflam. Etodilac, Phenoprofen, which is sold under the name Nalfon. Ibuprofen, sold under the names Advil and Motrin. Endomethacin, which is sold under the trade name Indicin. Ketoprofen, Ketorilac, Meclofenamate. Mephenamic Acid, which is sold under the name Ponstal. Meloxicam, sold under the name Mobic. Naproxen, also known as Aleve. Naprosin. Oxaprozin, sold under the name Depro. Paroxicam, also known as Feldine. 
and Celindac, also known as Clinaril. All non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be given orally as a capsule or as a tablet. However, only diclofenac can be given in all of these drug forms and routes of administration. It can be given orally as a tablet, such as in Voltaren or Cataflam. It can be given topically as a gel, Voltaren Emigel, or topically as a transdermal patch, Flector. The drug Voltaren is now available as a topical gel to treat uh, the pain of osteoarthritis. And it's the first prescription topical uh, skin gel that is approved by the FDA for treating the pain of osteoarthritis. All right, now we'll talk a little bit more in depth on how the process of an analgesic works. When body tissue gets damaged, the fluid within the cells gets released along with the cell contents. And the enzyme cyclooxygenase, or COX as it's known, converts this fluid to prostaglandin. The prostaglandins then stimulate pain receptors in the area. And the greater the amount of tissue damage, the more prostaglandins that are produced, then the greater the pain that is felt. There are two forms of cyclooxygenase. They're known as COX-1 or COX-2. Now the COX-1 enzyme produces prostaglandins that cause pain, but it is also active in platelet aggregation, regulating blood flow, and in protecting the mucous membranes of the stomach from the irritating effect of gastric acid. Now COX-2, its only action is to produce prostaglandins that cause pain. So analgesic drugs like aspirin and NSAIDs inhibit the COX-1 enzyme. So this blocks the production of the prostaglandins that cause pain, but it also disrupts the protective action of the prostaglandins have on the stomach. This is why aspirins and NSAIDs can cause stomach upset or peptic ulcers. And the COX-2 inhibitor drugs selectively inhibit only the COX-2 enzyme, so they control pain without any adverse effects on the stomach. Now there is a synthetic prostaglandin drug that is given to protect the gastric mucosa when natural prostaglandins are inhibited by aspirins or by NSAIDs. And that drug is misoprostol which is also known as the trade name Cytotec. Another way you can treat stomach upset or peptic ulcers that are caused by aspirins and NSAIDs are by using uh, proton pump inhibitor drugs. And these work because they decrease the amount of acid in the stomach. And some examples of this type of drug would be esomeprazole, also known as Nexium, and also lensoprazole, which is known as Prevacid. Now you'll often find non-narcotic analgesic drugs that are a combination drug. And there are multiple forms that you can find these combinations in. See, one possible combination is a salicylate drug, like aspirin, and a stimulant drug, such as caffeine. An example of this kind of combination would be anacin. Another possible combination, having a salicylate drug with an antacid drug to help minimize uh, stomach irritation. Some examples of this kind would be Alka-Seltzer with aspirin, which would be a combination of aspirin and sodium bicarbonate, and also the drug ascriptin, which is a combination of aspirin and aluminum and calcium and magnesium. Some other examples of this combination type, Bayer buffered aspirin, which is a combination of aspirin, uh, aluminum, calcium, and magnesium. Uh, bufferin, which is a combination of aspirin plus calcium and magnesium. Another possible combination uh, you might find are a salicylate analgesic drug like aspirin, a non-salicylate analgesic drug like acetaminophen, and a stimulant drug like caffeine. An example of that would be Excedrin Extra Strength. Yet another type of combination would include a salicylate drug plus a non-salicylate drug plus a stimulant like caffeine and also two antacid drugs, aluminum and magnesium. An example of this combination is the drug Vanquish. See another possible combination, a non-salicylate drug like acetaminophen plus a stimulant drug like caffeine. An example of this type of uh, combination is Excedrin Aspirin Free. Another type of combination include a prescription drug that contains a salicylate analgesic drug like aspirin or a non-salicylate analgesic drug, acetaminophen, and a stimulant drug, caffeine, and a barbiturate sedative drug, betalbital. An example of this type of combination is the drug Fioracet, and this is a combination of acetaminophen, caffeine, and butalbital. Another example of this combination, Fioranol, which is a combination of aspirin, caffeine, and butalbital. Now, the sound like drugs uh, we just talked about, Fioracet and Fioranol can be easily confused. And the way to keep them straight is Fioracet has the suffix ending C-E-T, which stands for acetaminophen, which is one of its primary components. Okay, now we'll move on to narcotic analgesic drugs. Now, these are given to treat moderate to severe pain, and they work by binding to opiate receptor sites in the brain. And when this happens, this blocks 
uh, pain impulses coming to the brain from nerves in the body. There are several different types of opiate receptors, and this explains why some narcotic drugs have a stronger potential for addiction than other narcotics. So this is what has led to the creation of different categories of scheduled drugs. Narcotics can produce, can produce sedation and a sense of well-being, and all narcotic drugs are scheduled drugs, ranging from a Schedule 2 to a 4. An example of a narcotic analgesic drug would be opiate drugs. These would include such things as morphine and codeine, and these are made directly from the natural opium poppy plant. And some narcotics can be made synthetically, and they're called opioids, and the suffix OID, oid, means resembling, literally translates to resembling opium. These are synthetically made drugs that resemble opium drugs. Now, the existence of different opiate receptors accounts for the different types of side effects. So some common side effects that people have with narcotics would include uh, constipation, uh, respiratory depression, uh, sedation, euphoria, and antitussive effects. There's a good number of narcotic analgesic drugs, and some of these drugs would include buprenorphine, which is sold under the trade name Buprenex, butorphanol, which is sold under the trade name uh, Stadol, uh, codeine, uh, fentanyl, which is sold under uh, multiple trade names including Abstral, uh, Actique, uh, Ventura, uh, Onsalus, Duragesic, Hydrocodone, sold under the trade name Zyhydro ER, Hydromorphone, sold as Dilaudid, Levorphanol, sold under the name Levodromoran, Meperidine, more commonly known as the trade name Demerol, uh, Methadone, also sold as Methadose or Dolophene, Morphine, known by the names Astromorph, Duramorph, or MS Cotton. Nalbifene, also known as uh, Nubane. And Oxycodone, more commonly known as Oxycontin or, or Roxycodone. Oxymorphone, known by the names Numorphan or Opana. Pentazacine, also known by the name Tailwind. Tapentadol, known by the trade name uh, Nucenta. And Tramadol, known by the name Ultram. In right, this image, we have a example of Meripidine more commonly known by the name Demerol. You can tell by the, uh, the label here, uh, the capital letter C and the Roman numeral 2. This is a Schedule 2 drug, a very high potential for uh, addiction with it being a Schedule 2. All right, now we'll talk about a drug alert. The narcotic drug morphine is more accurately known as morphine sulfate. And the trade name drug MS Cotton reflects the abbreviation for morphine sulfate. That's where the MS comes from. And the fact that the drug provides a continuous pain relief, cotton, Think of uh, continuous. And this is dosed as a controlled release tablet. And be careful not to confuse the narcotic analgesic drug duragesic, which is a Schedule II drug, often given to treat uh, severe pain, with the non-narcotic prescription analgesic drug uh, Duraclon. So the names are all familiar, but they are much different in strength and potential for addiction. The narcotic drug fentanyl is available in several different uh, drug forms. It can be given in a tablet, uh, a transdermal patch or even a lozenge on a stick. And informally, when it's given in that form, it's called the Actic Lollipop. And then Actic is the uh, trade name for that drug. Now, a common side effect of narcotic drugs is constipation. So in older adults who have severe pain and also have little physical activity, the constipation can become very severe. So most of the patients who fall under this description are also prescribed a laxative drug to prevent them from becoming constipated. Another common side effect of narcotic drugs, it suppresses the cough center within the brain. Methadone is also well known for its use in treating recovering narcotic drug addicts at methadone outpatient clinics. Now, Methadone is a Schedule II narcotic that is able to treat severe pain, but because it does not produce the euphoria that other narcotics do, it is not usually a drug of abuse. So this prevents the addict from experiencing either euphoria or withdrawal symptoms while it slowly decreases the addict's psychological dependence on another drug. Now we'll talk about uh, drug controversy. Uh, in 2014, against the recommendations of the FDA Advisory Committee, the FDA approved hydrocodone as an extended release capsule under the trade name uh, Zyhydro ER. And this extended release drug was designed to treat patients with severe pain who required constant and around the clock long term care. Zohydro ER contains up to five times more hydrocodone than a regular tablet would. So law enforcement and public health authorities feel that the capsule allows easy access to a large dose of hydrocodone that could easily trigger a new wave of drug abuse. According to a 2013 study by the DEA, more than 4.5 million Americans abused analgesic drugs, particularly narcotic analgesic drugs. Also in 2013, 
an advisory panel along with the DEA petitioned the FDA to reclassify hydrocodone from a Schedule III drug to a more regulated Schedule II drug. Oxycodone is available under several other trade names besides that of Oxycontin, but addicts use Oxycontin because it is a time-release formula that contains up to 10 times more narcotic than other forms of Oxycodone. See, the time-release formula is meant to control pain for 12 hours. However, addicts will crush the tablet and then snort the powder or dissolve the tablet and then inject that liquid intravenously so that the full narcotic dose takes effect immediately and produces a very strong high. Now, the drug company that makes Oxycontin in cooperation with the FDA has put new warning labels on the drug. However, it is the illegal sale and use of the drug that has been responsible for multiple deaths and an epidemic of addiction. So in 2013, the FDA and the American College of Physicians recommended new prescribing regulations for narcotic analgesic drugs, including fewer tablets for a prescription and mandatory visits to a physician in order to obtain a refill. All right, now we'll talk about a, a historical note. The drug morphine was first isolated from opium back in 1806. Because it could cause unconsciousness, morphine was named for Morpheus, who was the Greek god of dreams, who was also the son of Hypnos, the Greek god of sleep. And morphine was used extensively during the Civil War to treat the pain of battle wounds, resulting in very high rates of addiction among Civil War veterans. Now, heroin, a semi-synthetic narcotic drug, was introduced in 1898 and was thought to be a non-addicting substitute for morphine. Now, however, it proved to be even more addicting than morphine. See, at the present time, heroin is classified as a Schedule I drug with no medical uses at all because of its high potential for psychological and physical addiction. In 1939, Demerol, the first synthetic narcotic drug, was introduced. And today, narcotic drugs can be derived from opium, naturally or synthetically manufactured. The original drug, opium, is still on the market. It can be found in the combination analgesic drug BNO Suppurates, which is a Schedule II drug. And it can also be found as tincture of opium in the Schedule III drug, uh, Paragoric, which is only used to treat diarrhea. And because of a common side effect of all narcotic drugs is constipation, uh, Paragoric uses this side effect as a therapeutic effect to treat diarrhea. All right, next we'll talk about a combination non-narcotic and narcotic analgesic drugs. Now, non-narcotics and narcotics are often given in combination with each other for two main reasons. The non-narcotic drug provides a foundation of pain relief, upon which the narcotic can be built on. So therefore, less narcotic drug is needed to effectively control the pain. Second reason, the therapeutic actions of this combination of drugs treat the two components of pain. You have the pain from the stimulation of nerve endings, and also the pain that is heightened by anxiety. There's some other possible combinations of non-narcotic and narcotic analgesics. Drugs that contain a salicylate analgesic drug like aspirin, and a narcotic analgesic drug like codeine or oxycodone. Uh, some examples, emperin with codeine number three, which is a combination of aspirin and codeine, emperin with codeine number four, also with aspirin and codeine, and uh, percodan, which is a combination of aspirin and oxycodone. So another possible uh, combination you can see, drugs that contain a non-narcotic, non-salicylate analgesic drug, like acetaminophen, plus a narcotic analgesic drug, like codeine or hydrocodone or oxycodone or propoxyphene. Some examples of this type of combination, uh, Darvacet N, which is a combination of acetaminophen and propoxyphene, Lorset, which is a combination of acetaminophen and hydrocodone, uh, Lortab, which is a combination of acetaminophen and hydrocodone, and Percocet, which is a combination of acetaminophen and oxycodone. Uh, Roxacet, a combination of acetaminophen, oxycodone. Same thing with uh, Roxalox, which is a combination of acetaminophen, oxycodone. Some other combinations. Tylenol with codeine, and there are multiple forms of this drug. We'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. Uh, Tylenol with codeine is obviously a combination of acetaminophen with codeine. You have Tylenol with codeine number two. You have Tylenol with codeine number three, and Tylenol with codeine number four. All four of these have the same components, but it's the overall strength is what will make them different. So yeah, Tylox, a combination of acetaminophen and oxycodone, and Vicodin, a combination of acetaminophen and hydrocodone. Another combination of a non-narcotic and a narcotic analgesic drug is Vicoprofen, which is a combination of a, an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, ibuprofen, that plus hydrocodone. And this is also a Schedule three drug. Now, in a combination drug, uh, Tylenol with codeine, the symbol W and then the slash stands for the word with. 
So that's how that Tylenol is read, Tylenol with codeine. And it comes in uh, several different strengths. Now, Tylenol with codeine is the first strength and contains 12 milligrams of codeine. Tylenol with codeine number two is a little bit stronger. It has 15 grams of codeine. Tylenol with codeine number three is stronger still. It has 30 milligrams of codeine. And Tylenol with codeine number four is the strongest of the four types and has 60 milligrams of codeine. Now, it's important to note that Tylenol with codeine at the very low level with only 12 milligrams is a Schedule 5 drug. But the other three types that we mentioned are all Schedule 3 drugs. Now we'll mention a uh, drug alert. Uh, Emperin with codeine number 3 contains 30 milligrams of codeine and Emperin with codeine number 4 contains 60 milligrams of codeine. And this will correspond to the numbering and amount of codeine in Tylenol with codeine number 3 and Tylenol with codeine number 4. And it says a quick note, what comes to these uh, trade names? There's no such drug name as Tylenol with codeine number one, or Emperin with codeine number one, or Emperin with codeine number two. All right, now we'll move on to drugs that are used to treat uh, migraine headaches. Now, a migraine headache has a sudden onset with severe throbbing pain, often on uh, just one side of the head. It's often accompanied by uh, nausea and vomiting and very strong sensitivity to light. Now, these are caused by constriction in the arteries within the brain. It's often followed by a sudden dilation. It's accompanied by the release of neuropeptides by the trigeminal nerve. And there are branches that come off this nerve that protrude into the jaw and to the cheeks, uh, the eyes, and then the forehead. There are various types of drugs that are used to treat migraines. Uh, first one we'll talk about, uh, serotonin receptor agonist drugs. Now, serotonin is a neurotransmitter that normally constricts the arteries in the brain. So prior to the occurrence of a migraine, there are elevated levels of serotonin. So levels will suddenly decrease and this causes a rebound dilation of the arteries, which causes them to constrict again. Now, this type of drug is used to treat migraine headaches once they've already occurred. And these also will stimulate serotonin receptors on the trigeminal nerve to treat the pain of migraine headaches. These are some examples of uh, serotonin receptor agonists, and these are collectively known as uh, tryptin uh, drugs. Almotryptin, which is sold under the trade name Axert. Elotryptin, sold under the name uh, Relpax. Frovatryptin also known by the name uh, Frova, Naratriptan, known by the name Emerge, Rizotriptan, sold under the trade name uh, Maxalt, uh, Sumatriptan, also known by the name Imatrex, Zolmotriptan, sold under the uh, or trade name Zomig. So then a class of drug that's used to treat uh, migraines are called ergotamine. And these work because they constrict the arteries in the brain without significantly reducing blood flow. And these act by stimulating serotonin receptors, but also act on the receptors for norepinephrine and dopamine. And these are used to prevent or treat migraine headaches. These some examples of drugs that fall under this class. Dihydroergotamine, also known by its brand name Migranol, and ergotamine, sold under the name Ergomar. Another class of drugs that are used to treat migraines are beta blocker drugs. Now these work to keep the blood vessels dilated to prevent the initial vasoconstriction that's the beginning of a migraine headache. So these are used to prevent migraines. These some examples of this kind of drug are tenolol, also known by the name Tenormin, Metoprolol, known by the names Oppressor or Toprol XL, Nadolol, also known as Corgard, Propanolol, known by uh, its trade name Enderol, and Timolol, which is known by its trade name Blucadrin. Now the class of drugs that's used to treat migraines are the calcium channel blockers, and these act by slowing the movement of calcium ions uh, through calcium channels and into the smooth muscle that are around the arteries in the brain. So with less calcium available within the cells, these smooth muscles will relax, and therefore the arteries will remain dilated. So these are used to prevent migraine headaches. And some examples of this kind of drug, diltiazem, also known by the name cardizem, and verapamil, also known by its trade names Calin or Covera HS. Another type of drug that's used for migraines are antidepressants. These are drugs for depression associated with anxiety are found to be helpful in treating migraines and tension headaches. These some examples of this type of drug, amitriptyline, doxepin, also known by uh, its trade name Senequan, fluvoxamine, known by its trade name Luvox, imipramine, known by its trade name Tofranil, trozodone, also known by the name Aleptro. Some other kinds of drugs that are used for migraines, baclofen, known by the trade name Leorosal, this is a type of muscle relaxant drug, uh, botulinum toxin type A, more commonly called uh, Botox, this is injected into areas of the head and the neck directly. And this will prevent migraines for up to three months. And also, onobotulinum toxin A, also known by the name Botox Cosmetic. 
The other types of drugs that are used for migraines are anticonvulsant drugs. And drugs that would fall under this category would be topiramate, also known as topamax, valproic acid, also known as uh, stavzor. Right, you often find uh, drugs that are used in combination with one another to treat migraines. Uh, and combination drugs for migraines will contain a vasoconstrictor drug, such as ergotamine or isomethaptine. could also include an analgesic drug, like acetaminophen, or a stimulant drug, like caffeine, or a sedative drug, such as dichlorophenazone. And some examples of combination drugs uh, for migraines would include cathergot, which is a combination drug of uh, caffeine and ergotamine, and uh, triximet, which is a combination of sumatriptan and naproxen. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video on chapter number 20. We will continue our video series on pharmacology for health professionals with our next video on chapter number 21, anti-infective drugs.